Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to begin looking at implementing our interaction system, okay? And this is gonna basically allow us to look at an object, have a prompt appear on screen, and then basically interact with it to do whatever we want. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating our nodes for our player. And this is basically going to be possible by using a raycast. So I'm gonna to go to my player controller here. I'm going to right click on the camera 3D and add a new child node called a raycast 3D. Now a raycast 3D, the best way of thinking about this is it is basically like a laser, okay? We can point this laser in a direction and fire it off but we can also choose how far we want to fire it. And it can then return to us information about whatever it is hitting. So by default, this raycast is pointing down as you can see. So in the inspector, we're gonna set the target position to be zero on the X, zero on the Y, and negative two on the Z. So now you can see that this blue line is pointing forwards here. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and rename this raycast to be our interaction controller, like so. And then what we can also do is add in our text, okay? So the text is gonna appear on screen when we are hovering over an interactable object and it's gonna give us a prompt so we can actually see what that interaction is going to do. And then of course, we can interact. So I'm gonna right click on our interaction controller, add child node, and I'm gonna create a label. So this label here, as you can see, it switches us over into 2D mode because we are now working with UI. I'm just gonna increase this box here. And then at the top of our viewport here, I'm gonna click on this little circle green button. And this is where we can choose our anchor presets. Now, since this is gonna be something in the middle of our screen, I'm gonna click on the center preset right here, which is gonna move the anchor points down to the center. So no matter how large or small we resize our screen, this text box is always gonna maintain its central position. Then what we can do is just give it some example text. So we might have a square bracket, our key to interact, which is gonna be E, and then we might have something such as a pickup item, okay? So that's what the text would look like, for example. Uh, let's go ahead and rename this one to be our interaction prompt. And let's also fix it up, because our text looks a bit weird at the moment. It's sort of at the top left corner. So I'm gonna set the horizontal alignment to be center, vertical to be center, and we can also go to label settings and create a new label settings open that up, go down to font, and we can increase the font size. Uh, let's say we want to maybe make that about 24. We can then press play, see what it looks like, and there we go. So when we are hovering over an item, you could imagine that prompt appearing. Okay, so we have our text here. Uh, by default, we are going to set the text to be nothing because we don't want that appearing on screen when we're not interacting with something. And we are then going to go ahead and create two scripts. The first script down here in our file system, we can create a new script here. And this one is going to be called interactable object. So I'm gonna call this one interactable object, create that. Our next script is then gonna be interact controller. Uh, so I'm actually gonna select our interaction controller uh, node right here because when we create a script, that is gonna automatically inherit from Raycast 3D, which is what we want. Call the interaction controller and create that as well. So now we have two scripts. We have interaction controller, which is attached to our Raycast node, and we have interactable controller, which at the moment is just existing in our file system. So let's start with the interactable object uh, script, because this is basically what we are going to attach to everything we want to interact with. And it's gonna be a pretty small script. So let's remove everything right here. Uh, we're gonna give it a class name of interactable object. And we are also going to extend from node 3D, okay? Um, now we are giving it the name of interactable object because basically in our other script, we want to access this node of a specific type. And giving it a class name is just gonna make it easy in script to access and modify uh, the variables and functions we have here. Now, in terms of variables, we're gonna have two. We're gonna export this, and this variable is gonna be called interact prompt, and it's gonna be of type string. And this is pretty much gonna be what we want to appear or what we want to show to the player when they hover over 
this object. So for example, pick up item, open door, that sort of thing. We then want another export variable called can interact. And this is gonna be of type boolean and we'll make it true by default. Now, the reason why we have can interact is because we might have an interactable object that we don't want the player to interact with at a certain time. So for example, if we have a door, uh, we might wanna make it so that the player can only interact with the door when it is open or closed, not when it is maybe halfway through an animation. Okay, so at times you may want to make it so the player cannot interact with an object. And finally, we're gonna have one function and this is going to be called underscore interact. Okay, and here we are just gonna print override this function. Now, what do I mean by override this function? Well, pretty much this script right here, this class, this interactable object, this is not what we are gonna be attaching to our objects we want to interact with. Rather, this is going to be a script we are going to be over, we are going to be inheriting from. Now, inheriting basically means that we are gonna create a new script which is going to basically have these variables and this function, uh, but that is gonna basically already be built in. It's sort of similar to how we are extending from Node 3D here. In our player controller, we are extending from character body 3D, okay? In our player controller script, we have access to variables such as velocity and functions such as is on floor. Yet those are not variables and functions we have created in our script. Those are variables and functions that exist in our character body 3D script, which we are extending from, okay? So we are basically getting all of their functions, all of their variables, um, and then adding on our extra code right here. That's what we're gonna be doing with our interactable object, okay? This is gonna act as the parent class and whatever children class, doors, objects, lights that we might want to turn on and off, they are all going to be inheriting this script and having access to its variables and functions. And what that also means is we can override functions. Basically, we can create an identical function in a child or in an inside of an inherited class. And that function is basically going to override this one right here. Now, maybe a bit confusing. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, but let's go over to our interaction controller and begin working on this. So inside of here, we can delete the ready function since we will not be needing that. Uh, but we are going to keep the process because we will be using process. Now let's create our variables. We're going to create an on ready variable called interact prompt label. It's going to be of type label and it's going to be equal to get node and the interact prompt right there. Okay. So now that we have our interact prompt label, we can then of course assign it inside the script here. Uh, but let's fill out the process function. So pretty much what we want to do is every single frame, we want to get whatever object we are looking at. Okay, so I'm gonna create a variable called object, and this is gonna be equal to get underscore collider. Now this collider, or now this get collider function, this is built into our Raycast 3D node, which we, which we are extending from, okay? And the Raycast has a get collider function, which basically just gets the collider of whatever object it is currently hitting. Now, again, this could also be null, so we need to make sure of that. Um, and let's also then go ahead and set our interact prompt label to be equal to an empty string here. And then down here, we are going to check to see, okay, do we have an object? And is this object of type interactable object? Because we don't want to be able to interact with a static mesh or some other sort of object that doesn't have the interaction capabilities. So here we are going to go if object, so basically if this object exists and if object is interactable object. Okay, so if the object we are um, basically uh, interacting with, if it exists and if it is of type interactable object, then we can continue on with the if statement here. And we're just gonna add in a pass for now because we're gonna be working on that in the next lesson. And one more thing before we go, we need to go up here and actually fix this line of code. So this needs to be interact prompt label dot text. Okay, we are setting the text property, not the actual label itself. So in the next lesson, we are gonna continue on with this function and actually create ourselves an interactable object to see it in action. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. Let's continue on with our script. So what we need to do now is we have 
Well, first of all, we have already in the process function gone access to whatever collider we are currently looking at. We are setting our prompt label to be empty. And then down here, we are checking to see if the object we are hitting exists. And if that object is of type interactable object, then we are going to run the code down here. Now, if the object that we are looking at is not inter it cannot be interacted, okay? In our interact object, we have that can interact boolean. If that is false, then we want to return. So if object dot can interact equals equals false, then return, because we don't want to do anything if we are unable to interact with it. Now, otherwise, if we can interact with it, we are going to set our prompt label. So interact prompt label dot text equals, and we're going to have the little E here so that we know what button to press and then go plus object dot and then we can access the interact prompt variable here. So dot interact prompt. There we go. And then finally, we need a way of actually detecting when we have pressed the interact key to then call the interact function. So here we're going to go if input dot is action just pressed interact, then we are going to go object dot interact okay and we are calling that interact function right here so there we go that is pretty much it for our interaction controller now let's look at actually setting up an interaction inside of our project okay uh, i've got a little scene here set up with some trees and some rocks uh, and what i'm going to do is i am going to make it so that we are going to have these little pedestals placed around and whenever we walk up to one of these pedestals and interact with it it is going to turn on a light so if we go to the models folder, this is all included in the course files tab. You should see there is a pedestal.tscn. I'm just going to drag that in here and it is going to create us this object right here. Okay. And on this object, we are going to create a new script so we can just go ahead and yeah, we can just create a new script on it right here. And I'm just going to call this one pedestal interaction. Okay, um, now we can delete all of the code we have here and we want to extend it from interactable object. Okay, extending it from interactable, interactable object means that we have access to the interact function as well as these two variables here. Okay, so if we save this and we select the pedestal here in our scene view, you'll see in the inspector, we have the interact prompt that we can assign. So maybe we can say uh, turn on and we can also enable if we can or cannot interact with it. So what we now need to do is we need to, first of all, set up a function that is going to override the interact function on interactable object. Because remember, whenever we interact with this, it is calling this function here uh, and we have this print line of code. But what if we want to add our own logic? Well, to do that, we can override the function. And this is done by just creating the exact same function name. So we'll go func interact. And in here, we will just print out turn on light for now. Okay, just to see if it works. So what we're doing here is since we are extending from the interactable object script, whenever we create a function with the exact same name as exists in this script, we are overriding it meaning that when the interact function is called, it is called here instead of in the base interactable object script. So let's save this, let's press play and see if it works. So we can walk up to the pedestal here and if I look over it, it says turn on. If I press E, you can see down in the output, it is printing out that message, which is great. Now let's make it so this light here is first of all, gonna start off in the, on, in the off state, I mean. So let's open up that pedestal scene by just clicking on the open in editor button here. We will select the light bulb object and this light bulb object, we want to go to visibility and disable that. Okay. So inside of our script, what we then want to do is create a variable for the light bulb. So on ready var light bulb, and this is going to equal get node. And this node here is going to just be light bulb. And then down here, when we interact with it, we are going to go light bulb dot visible equals true. And we then also want to set can interact to be false because we only want to interact with this object once. So back in our scene here, back in our main scene, I mean, we could press play. And if we walk over to the pedestal here, turn it on. There we go. 
So now what we can do is we can make a little game out of this. We can actually move these around here. We can maybe make a couple duplicates and place them around the level. And now you have a little game where you have a walking simulator. You can walk up to these different pedestals, turn them on like so. Now, of course, you can see how you can expand this into really whatever sort of game you wish. Um, you can have a game where you might need to collect a number of things. You can have a game where you might need to complete a puzzle. And maybe when you interact with something, it moves one of the puzzle pieces. It might open up a secret door that you can enter in. There are a lot of different things you can do with this interaction system in combination with the player controller. So yeah, thank you for watching.